Hey, everyone, and welcome to this podcast. Um, today, we're going to focus on Dietrich Bonhoeffer and his religionless Christianity, specifically that comes out of the letters that he is writing uh, to his friend, Eberhard Bethke, um, while he's in prison. And it comes from uh, the papers and letters in prison that uh, he writes. And, and after he died, uh, Bethke took all these letters that not only were written to him, but were written to other people. And he puts them together. And we kind of we hear Bonhoeffer kind of exploring different issues, trying to understand what's going on and trying to make sense of eventually what he understood would be his own death. So as he's sitting in prison, Bonhoeffer starts asking really important questions uh, about the war and its aftermath. And he's really focused on what does this all mean for Christianity? If you think about World War I, you get this call to go and fight and you have Christians just slaughtering one another. By the time you get to World War II, that, that kind of religious justification for war isn't really there. Uh, and so Bonhoeffer has no illusions about what's going on in World War II. Hitler has co-opted the institutional churches in Germany. So Bonhoeffer and others had started this confessing church that had kind of broken off and was uh, saw what was going on in, in the churches and their unwillingness to speak out against uh, Hitler as a, kind of an abdication of their responsibility to the gospel. So the question for Bonhoeffer when you read through these letters, is how do we talk about God after the death of God? Now, what do I mean by the death of God? And and interestingly, Bonhoeffer doesn't talk about that phrase. He doesn't use that phrase in his letters. But what I want to suggest is some of the things that he's talking about have this kind of death of God idea in the background. And it comes from the parable of the madman by Friedrich Nietzsche, who openly wonders what new festivals and rites of atonement need to be invented in the wake of God's death, because the old ones no longer make any sense. Uh, Nietzsche is making the claim that, that God is a concept and that God as a concept had undergirded the way people understood the world and the truth about the world for a very long time. But now things have disrupted that, and he is asking them just to cut the cord. And then is saying, like, all right, what what do we have to change? What new festivals, what new uh, religious rites now must we invent to move into this next uh, stage of life? And I think in a similar way, Bonhoeffer is asking his friend this same question. So let me give you this quote from Bonhoeffer's letter. What keeps gnawing at me is the question, what is Christianity? Or who is Christ actually for us today? The age when we could tell people that with words, whether with theological or with pious words, is past, as is the age of inwardness and conscience. And that means the age of religion altogether. We're approaching a completely religionless age People as they are now simply cannot be religious anymore. So what he's suggesting is the situation before the two world wars with religion and theology and the questions that they're asking and even the way that they're doing church no longer will make sense once this second world war is over. There will be a radical shift, a radical change. And he's primarily thinking about the West. So he's thinking about Europe. Uh, and in America, we've, we're experiencing that later than, than Europe experienced it. Um, but, but that's the question that he's asking is now, how do we talk about God in this new world uh, where people are abandoning religion? Um, now, a lot has been made of this, these quotes, and it's often you know, from people who believe that Bonhoeffer became an atheist. But what's important for us to remember is that even when we talk about Nietzsche's death of God, we're not necessarily talking about um, you know, the idea that God doesn't exist or that there isn't a divine being. What we're talking about, again, is this metaphysical guarantee that what Nietzsche is specifically talking about in that parable is that God has become the guarantee of a particular way of life. 
And what happens then when that understanding of the world breaks down? That's that's what he's getting at. And in the same way, Bonhoeffer is, I think, asking the, the, a similar question. And he's not rejecting Christian faith, but he asks, you know, do the metaphysical questions about how we talk about God and, and so on, do they make sense anymore? Do they resonate anymore post-World War II? Um, how do you talk about God um, in the context of the Holocaust, for example, and the violence and the inhumanity of, of World War II? So what he's saying is that the post-war world will be changed. It'll be a changed reality in which the old metaphysical categories no longer will make any sense. And so he, he actually asks this very prophetic question. Here's a quote. How can Christ become Lord of the religionless as well? Is there such a thing as religionless Christianity or religionless Christian? If religion is only the garb in which Christianity is clothed, and this garb has looked very different in different ages, what then is religionless Christianity? Now, again, I think he's being prophetic here. Um, you know, today we're talking about young people leaving the church, and he's asking a question about how we talk about God uh, in the context of a modern contemporary uh, world. And for him, it was a post-World War II world, um, and now we're kind of a ways away from that, but I think his question uh, still stands. And I think it's important to see that what he's doing is making a distinction between Christian faith and religion. He's not abandoning faith, but he now wonders, what does that faith look like in a radically changed world? Now, I think Bonhoeffer provides an important lens for us to think about our own kind of contemporary existence here in the West, in the U.S. and Europe and so on. Because we're dealing right now with a lot of political and religious tension. And I think that a lot of this is grounded in anxiety and fear. That if I were to try to diagnose what's going on, what we see are different ways of life are beginning to change. And people are getting anxious and fearful, and they're trying to hold on to these ways of life. This is happening in both conservative and in liberal spaces. I think both in politics and in, you know, what we might call religious communities or the Christian community. Um, the existential threat of this loss, I think, is what is causing people to hold on tightly, not only to their political identity, but to their religious identity as well. And I think there has been a doubling down on the metaphysical. There's been a doubling down on the cultural container in which these political and faith expressions are present. Today, they're being expressed in what we would call ideological perspectives. Although those who attempt to kind of reify these perspectives see them as the ultimate truth about reality. I think this can be seen in the arguments about tradition, whether it's how do you interpret the Constitution, or this whole kind of emphasis upon creeds and confessions. And I think changes in science and technology and culture have created a dissonance and how we are experiencing modern life, which raises all kinds of questions about where do we find meaning and what becomes now this, this source of meaning. And in his letters, what Bonhoeffer is suggesting is that the post-war world will be a time to reimagine how we talk about God. He, he's saying that the old religious patterns, in the West anyway, are no longer going to speak in the way they once did. He is not suggesting that they're bad or that they should be abolished. He's, he's asking bigger questions about how they communicate in the world. So in our time, anxiety and fear have pushed individuals and communities into really polarized positions with both sides doubling down on metaphysics and ideology. Nowhere is this more evident than in the human sexuality debate. On the one side, Christians have reverted back to ancient metaphysical categories to talk about gender and sex. Uh, it just seems like so many Protestants especially want to reappropriate Aristotle, uh, for example. And part of me wants to say, like, look, I love the Catholic Church, but we're not Catholic. And and uh, yet this move back to kind of Aristotle is a way to think about sex and gender and, and sexuality. Or they'll go back to Plato. Uh, and, and they do so in a way to support their so-called biblical views of marriage and sexuality. Well, on the other side... 
you have new forms of cultural ideology that undergird the so-called biblical views uh, that support LGBTQ plus issues. So on both sides, um, ideology is being used um, that in a way that reduces God to an abstract metaphysical concept. And the whole point of it is to support a particular view of the world that provides the grounds for excluding some people as heretics or in excluding other people as bigots. So both sides are playing this game. And again, my argument is there, that we've been pushed here into this polarization because of the fear and anxiety that comes when our cultural world begins to kind of shake uh, a little bit. And this is where I think Bonhoeffer's questions about religionless Christianity have something to contribute to the conversation. Because here, Bonhoeffer stands within the stream of both Kierkegaard and Nietzsche. Uh, Kierkegaard's attack on Danish Christendom, uh, religiosity, and Nietzsche's proclamation that God is dead. So when he's asking this question, who is Jesus Christ for us today? For Bonhoeffer, Christ cannot be reduced to religious piety and morality, nor can Christ be kind of reduced to metaphysics or ideology. Faith for Bonhoeffer, like Kierkegaard, is lived in the existential call to follow Jesus by loving God and loving our neighbor. Um, and as Kierkegaard argues and claims, true faith is not found in recollection. It's not in the past, but it's in repetition. It is in following God into the future. It's in following Jesus Christ in a life of discipleship. So this is what I want to explore in the next few posts and podcasts. I'm really interested to think through what is this religionless Christianity and for Bonhoeffer also this, this world come of age. What does this mean for us? And is there a way of kind of cutting through the polarization in all of these different issues uh, with these terms? Can Bonhoeffer help us get back to asking the more important questions about what does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean to love Jesus? And what does it mean to follow Jesus out into the world? And what does it mean for us to become signs of God's love and and reconciliation of this world in the death and resurrection of Jesus. So that's what we'll explore uh, in the next few episodes. <laughs>